Hi, this is Dr. Gregory Sadler. I'm a professor of philosophy and the president and founder of an educational consulting company called Reason.io, where we put philosophy into practice. I've studied and taught philosophy for over 20 years, and I find that many people run into difficulties reading classic philosophical texts. Sometimes it's the way things are said or how the text is structured, but the concepts themselves are not always that complicated, and that's where I come in. To help students and lifelong learners, I've been producing longer lecture videos and posting them to YouTube. Many viewers say they find them useful. What you're currently watching is part of a new series of shorter videos, each of them focused on one core concept from an important philosophical text. I hope you find it useful as well. So, this is another example video where I'm, using, I'm trying to you know, provide some applications and examples for Jeremy Bentham's understanding of utilitarianism as a moral theory, which is oriented around the greatest happiness principle, which says that the right action for a person to pursue, the right choices for them to make, are those which maximize happiness and pleasure, minimize pain or displeasure, um, you know, unhappiness, misery, not just for themselves, but for all who are concerned in the situation. So this requires us to do some balancing at times of some people's pleasure against other people's pain. And uh, Bentham thinks that you can actually quantify all this sort of stuff rigorously. I'm not actually going to try in this, this case to provide sort of uh, you know, quantifiable um, tables and arguments about each of these. Instead, I'm going to propose these as things that you want to think about in a utilitarian way and, and try to walk you through how you might, how you might set that up. Because um, some of these would depend on, on factors. So this one is about uh, romance, sex, dating, all, all these sorts of things. It's a very important part of our, our lives. One in which I think that just culturally we're not on the same page as Jeremy Bentham, who's, uh, you know, in many respects, a creature of his own age. You know, we're living after the, the various sexual revolutions and the you know, proliferation of all sorts of things. I actually had uh, maybe a few other uh, issues to this as well. Um, and you know, this is an important part of our, our, our lives. For many people, it's felt to be an irreplaceable part of their, their lives, and uh, not just the, the sex part, but also romance, you know, finding a relationship, uh, flirting, all these, these sorts of things. So there's, there's many, many, many topics that we could discuss when it comes to this, um, but I'm just going to talk about a few. We'll see if we can actually get through this whole list and look at them in a utilitarian perspective. So we want to look at how these sorts of things, the decisions that people make, would, would affect everybody concerned in terms of pleasures and pains. So let's think about dating uh, and hooking up in, in general, right? And you could say dating versus hooking up. Hooking up means you run into somebody and you know maybe they live in the same place as you or you work with them or they're at the bar or something like that. You go home, you, you have sex with them, maybe to their home, who knows, somewhere. And it's just for fun. It's just, there's, there's no actual commitment there. Uh, whereas dating, you actually want to try to get to know the person for who they are, I mean ideally at least. We could actually talk about the ethics of dating, you know, what should you be doing on a date. Um, but if we want to contrast these, let's contrast them as rigorously as possible. So, so hooking up is you just meet up with somebody, both of you find each other attractive, go back to wherever, have sex, sex is enjoyable, it's, it's, it's fun to do that sort of thing, that, that's producing pleasure, happiness for the people involved. Um, dating is a longer term process. Um, you know, it, it's involving getting to know the person, doing some activities together, which might later on down the line lead to having sex, but are not necessarily geared towards that. You could date without actually wanting to have sex. You, you know, maybe you want to uh, wait until you're married or something like that. Um, now, let's think about there's immediate pleasure coming with hooking up, right? And presumably there's no sort of coercive situation, and, you know, if we add in those sort of things, then we gotta adjust the, uh, the balances in these cases. Um, is it really the best thing to do, though? Or is dating better? 
you know, you could think about the different ranges of, of pleasures. So, you know, sexual pleasure is, is pretty intense, but it doesn't last an awful long time. Um, and if you want to have more of it, you've got to keep doing it, right? And now, you know, it's, it's not just the, the pleasure of having sex that somebody has, you know. They come to work the next day, and we say, oh, you know, you're in a very good mood, you know, you're glowing. So maybe, maybe there's something else that goes along with that having to do with, you know, a sense of well-being or, you know, succeeding or something like that. And people enjoy that, right? So that's, that's pleasure. Any pains that might come with that? Well, you know, here's, here's a kind of silly example. Think about the proverbial walk of shame. Now, you know, that's to do with social disapproval, right? And you might say, well, who cares about what other people think? Well, people actually do care about what other people think. And if you're, you're, you, if you're a utilitarian, you care about what other people think if it, if it produces pain or pleasure, right? So if social disapproval is one of the consequences that sometimes comes with hooking up versus dating, you know, from a utilitarian perspective, that, that lowers the balance of pleasure and pain. Um, you know, you could also say if it's a hookup situation and one person thinks that there's going to be a lot more there, a real relationship developing, and the other person says, no, I'm just here for the sex, um, now for this other person there could be pain attendant upon that, Bentham would say. Uh, that means likely to result from it. And even if there's just a possibility that it's going to result from it, you have to take that into account. Not as highly as, you know, absolutely certain, you know, sure thing, but you would take that into account. Whereas, you know, I mean, with dating, okay, you, of course, you know, there's things that go wrong on dates, too. So you might want to take those probabilities into account. But you do get to know the person. There are some goods that can come out of dating that might not come directly out of hooking up or ever up. Um, and, you know, social approval and disapproval could be part of that. How other people see you, that, that could be part of that because that produces pleasures and pains. Um, so, let's leave that one sit. Let's, let's move on to the um, question of you know, promiscuity, as we call it, right? Um, should you sleep with just about anybody? Should you, or should you be picky in who you have sex with? Well, you know, you can think of a lot of different ways that, that you can get yourself in trouble um, by being fairly indiscriminate with who you enjoy sexual pleasure with. You can find yourself with somebody who's abusive, uh, which, you know, is probably for them somewhat pleasant, uh, but for you it's going to be painful. And so, you know, in the overall balance of the situation, that's probably not as good of a thing as finding somebody who's not abusive, right? Um, can lead to a bad reputation uh, for various reasons. It could actually lead to a good reputation depending on the culture that you're in as well. Um, possibility of you know, contracting various diseases, of getting yourself entangled in, in romantic relationships that you didn't mean to, hurting other people in the process, um, you know, arousing jealousy, all these sorts of things come with that. Uh, putting yourself in a situation where your reputation then leads other people to only see you as a sexual object. Um, again, from a utilitarian perspective, you would want to look at how everybody is affected by this. If, um, if it's just you and you're on your own, then you would look at how you are affected by it. Is it a good thing for you or a bad thing for you? Is the trade-off of getting sexual pleasure whenever you want it or whenever you're able to access it? Uh, it, does that outweigh the disadvantages and pains that, that can come with that as well? So mostly psychological pains, but it could be physical pains as well. If you have other people involved in the process, um, if you're not just worried about your partners, you know, if your partners don't know that you're promiscuous, then, then you might have a problem, right? It cause pain for them. Well, let's say everybody is in the know, like it's a bunch of swingers or something, right? Um, now, if you actually have other people in some way dependent on you or who are affected by your conduct, their pleasures and pains are important too. Let's say you have kids. Let's say you're a single parent. Can you go out and sleep with whoever you want? It's 
not quite the same as being on your own now, is it? Now, you know, kids, they can be greatly affected by that. That can produce a lot of pain for them. If, it, you know, if you're actually doing a lot of, uh, well, here's, you know, so-and-so, he's my new boyfriend, and she's my new girlfriend, that produces instability for them. That bothers kids. They don't usually see that as a good thing. Um, you're also taking time away from perhaps other things that you should be attending to. So, you know, these are things you'd have to take into account from a utilitarian perspective. From a utilitarian perspective, of course, if you could like arrange things in such a way that it was just all pleasure and nobody was getting any pain caused, then, you know, like in Brave New World, you know, had a, a Huxley's um, story, that would make sense, wouldn't it? Um, but usually that's not the situation we find ourselves in. And utilitarianism doesn't just say, well, we should change the world so it can all be, the, you know, a playground. It actually looks at the world that we're in and says, look, in the situation that you're in, if you're going to hurt a bunch of people by your, your conduct, don't do it. Pornography. That's an interesting one, too. And this is a huge topic, so maybe I should actually defer this to its own thing. Um, Pornography has been seen as a bad thing because it, you know, objectifies women. Uh, some people have argued that it leads to, to you know, in direct ways or indirect ways. And these are all kind of, kind of hazy to uh, abuse, to rape, to those sorts of things. Um, those arguments aren't, aren't often as often made as they, they used to be. They're, we're living in a culture that is just saturated with um, pornography, it's available anywhere that you, you would want it to be. You know, all you'd have to do is type in you know, a few things on your phone and you could access it or go to a computer. Um, it's no longer you know, the, the dirty book underneath the, the gas station counter. I used to, I used to actually said, I ever worked in a gas station where they actually had them underneath the counter, the brown paper bag. And people would come in and they'd be real furtive and they'd ask for them you know, when there were no kids around. Um, we live in a culture that's so saturated with so many people are using it that it's starting to have interesting effects that we could we could talk about. A lowering of libido, a sort of displacement of normal sexual energies. Even if you're like you know a big you know libertarian, everybody should be able to do you know whatever it is that they want, and so long as they're not hurting anybody. Um, you know, overtly kind of thing. Porn might be a little bit questionable given its long-term societal effects. I mean, it is, it, from a utilitarian perspective, it might be in some way liberating to allow people access to it, um, and it might be worse to try to get rid of it altogether because then you produce a lot of pain for people who want to actually see it. But if it's, if it's leading to, if it's affecting relationships, between people in general, even the people who have these, you know, sort of very enlightened viewpoints of everybody should be able to do what they want so long as they're not hurting anybody, it turns out that it does hurt them in some ways in these relationships. Let's 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 pass on from that because that's a bigger topic and I want to get to some of these other things. Um, sexual or even emotional fidelity. Are you sleeping with somebody else when you're, you're supposed to be in a monogamous, committed relationship? Would that be okay from a utilitarian perspective, or would that be a bad thing? And we might not just think about it in terms of um, actually having sex with people, or even you know doing the lesser things that some people say. Well, that's not really sex. Um, I actually count those as sex myself, right? There's kissing, and then you know there's that whole range that that is sexual activity, right? Um, so I don't, I'm not, I don't go the Clinton line, right? Um, but you can, you can flirt with people, you can encourage jealousies, you can try to get attention. There's a lot of other things that could come up. You could have emotional affairs. Now, how would a utilitarian look at these things? Well, again, you have to think about who's being, who's being hurt, who's, who's not being hurt. I suppose that a utilitarian, if it was a relationship, where both partners had agreed, this is an open relationship, we can do what we want, and they are emotionally mature enough where they are not going to, despite having said that, become jealous of the other person 
and hurt as a result, then a utilitarian would say that that's absolutely fine, provided that everybody in, who's involved in this is involved in such a way, right? Um, everybody would have to be okay with it in that case. Um, in that case, there's really not much point in talking about fidelity, is there? Because you've already agreed to be unfaithful. So usually we're talking about people who have some sort of expectation that their relationship, what they're sharing with each other sexually, in terms of intimacy, companionship, those sorts of things, emotional life, are exclusive. Would it be okay, let's ask a question like this. Let's say you have a spouse who has another spouse and they're not getting what they need from the other spouse because the other spouse is screwed up, is a mean person, is not going to give them what they want. Or, let's say we, we go even further, so that's scenario A. Scenario B is you have a spouse who's not getting what, what they need, what they want from the, the other spouse, and it's not because the other spouse is a mean person, it's because they just can't deliver. They're, they're exhausted, um, you know, like for instance, uh, you know, we were just watching The Sopranos, first season last night, and um, Carmela says, you know, I didn't mind the girlfriends at first because I saw them as, as essentially, um, you know, a form of, of outsourcing. I couldn't deliver everything that, that Tony needed, and so, great, he goes off with the girlfriends and then he's, he's not, you know, getting in my hair because I had to devote myself to the house, the kids, and, you know, other things. Um, let's say it's a relationship like that. So we got A, we got B. Is the other person going to get hurt? So we, have, we actually have three people involved in this. We've got the spouse who's going to cheat. We have the spouse who is cheated upon, and then we have the other person. Let's assume that they're single, just so we won't make it even more complicated. We're not doing spouses, you know, seducing spouses. So for the, the spouse who's cheating, and for the other person, you have pleasure. You have sexual pleasure coming in. Now you may also have some pain, too, right? Worry about, am I going to get caught? All, all those sorts of things. You'd have to take that into account. That could lower the amount of total pleasure uh, overall, the utility. Um, for the spouse who is being cheated upon, if they find out, they are going to be very hurt, presumably. Even if they're just suspecting, they're going to be hurt to some degree. That's going to produce some unhappiness for them. If it reaches the tipping point where this is producing more pain than pleasure overall, then a utilitarian would just say, forget this. This can't possibly be right. Um, even if you're opposing it to um, option A is, is the spouse cheats, option B is the spouse doesn't cheat, if, if option B results in greater utility, even if the, the, the spouse is unhappy, they're not getting what they want, if it would produce more unhappiness for them to actually cheat, even taking into account the sexual pleasure that they're going to get, then staying you know, in the committed relationship would be the thing to do. Um, now, it gets a little bit different when we're talking about the, the option B one, where it was the spouse saying, yeah, yeah, go off and, and do your thing. I can't give you what I need. I know that it counts as cheating. Um, presumably, they're, they're not as unhappy about it, and the, the other spouse is a little less unhappy because they're not you know, having to worry about getting caught or social disapproval or things like that. Um, you know, another thing you'd have to take into account is, is some people actually get a kick out of cheating, don't they? Um, so that would actually increase the pleasure for some people. From a utilitarian perspective, this might be something that's unattractive to some of you. I know I would find this attractive about utilitarianism. It would say if you can, um, if you can cheat in such a way that, that it's, it's really turning you on to do so, that would be a good thing from a utilitarian perspective. Uh, you know, another thing to think about this one, too, would be, um, from a utilitarian perspective, if you can keep the other person from finding out, that produces a greater balance of, of pleasures over pains, right? Because if they find out, they're going to get hurt. So if they never find out, um, you know, you, most of us would say it's a bad thing to do whether you get found out or not. Utilitarian, it, you know, how bad is it? It depends on how much pain it's producing. Um, you know, this, this would also tie in with deceiving a partner or, or others, you know, in, in 
relationships. Um, if you can keep them from finding out something that makes them unhappy, that produces pain for them. Like let's say somebody is not that attractive, right? And they have kind of a low self-image and they're looking to you for affirmation. And you can take it or leave it, right? You know, you, you are attracted to them, but not super attracted, but you, you talk to them like, yeah, you're the most attractive person in the world. Um, those other people don't know what they're talking about. You're great. Um, you know, from a utilitarian perspective, that would actually be doing a good thing, wouldn't it? Um, tearing somebody down, being too critical, would actually be a bad thing. That could, that could also be a kind of deception, too. Some people deliberately make people feel worse about themselves in terms of relationships, in terms of romance, sexuality, attractiveness. Um, let's think about a few other things. Um, safe sex. Should you practice safe sex? That's a no-brainer from a utilitarian perspective. Um, given the option, uh, there's a lot of different ways in which this could happen. And we can even talk about abstinence as a, you know, being the safest of all, um, but let's say that we're actually talking about you know trying to prevent diseases. Would a utilitarian be for or against you know behavior that could lead to sexual diseases? Obviously against, right? Because there's no positive trade-off to that. Even for somebody like Michelle Foucault, who uh, according to reports went out and got himself AIDS fairly deliberately because uh, he wanted to do some sort of grand experiment, which strikes me as just totally nuts, right? The, the payoff in terms of the pain involved is so much greater than any sort of pleasure that might result from that. Um, so, you know, that, that's an easy one. What about breaking up? This is something that, you know, we have to face in a lot of relationships. Um, most relationships don't actually work out, and that means that either this person has to break up with this person, or vice versa, or they both do it at the same time. Um, when should you decide to break up with a person? Well, it would depend on the balance of pains and pleasures. And breaking up with somebody for a utilitarian would not be a purely selfish decision. Um, let's put it this way. A utilitarian would probably not say, it's not you, it's me. Um, because if it's them, then they have the opportunity to fix that part of themselves that's keeping them from being able to have the relationship and give the other person the pleasure or happiness that's involved in the relationship that obviously they want to stay in. Um, now, why do, why do people break up? It could be because they're incompatible, you know, and, and there's sort of no fault there. They just don't really, they're not the right people for each other. Um, in some cases, it's because somebody's abusive. And then, you know, from a utilitarian perspective, you ought to break up with that person, even if breaking up with that person is going to make them unhappy. Why? Because they're actually making you more unhappy in the relationship by being abusive to you than any pleasure or happiness that they're, that, that they're getting out of it. Um, plus, there's probably a lot of other people affected. If you have kids and you're in an abusive relationship, you probably need to get out of that and take the, take the kids away from the abuser, right? Um, that's why we have, you know, uh, shelters and why we have social services where both parents might be screwed up to them, take, take the kids away. And I understand there's lots of problems with social services, but um, yeah, when it comes to an abusive relationship, uh, a good benthamite would say you should probably get out because you look at the, the, the uh, balance of pleasures and pains for all concerned, and it's probably a fairly negative balance. It's probably affecting a lot of people. It's probably going to affect a lot of people long term. Now, when you're breaking up with somebody, here's another thing that a utilitarian would say. Is it just sort of, well, now that you've decided to break up, you have no commitments to that person whatsoever? No, because their pleasure and pain still matters. So you shouldn't be a jerk when you're breaking up with them. If being honest with them will produce less pain over the long term than being deceptive towards them, then you should be honest. 
Um, if you can say, you know, what it is that you, you don't like about that person without calling them a bunch of names that make them feel bad, without tearing them down, then you should do that from a utilitarian perspective. Um, if you're being broken up with, I guess the utilitarian wouldn't have an awful lot of advice for you, would they? Um, so you see that utilitarianism can, can apply to all different sorts of uh, issues in, in romance, sexuality, desire, um, human attraction, relationships. And it doesn't always take the perspective that whatever gives you the most pleasure, so long as nobody's getting physically hurt, you know, or, or you know, rules are being broken or anything like that, that it's always okay. There, you know, a utilitarian would look at things in the long term and in the wide range. They would look at how this affects people besides just you and besides just the person that you're involved with, whether it affects other people as, as a result. Um, that's important to take into account. Um, so that's probably enough about these issues. I'm going to shoot some other videos having to do with other important aspects of our life and utilitarianism as well.